Aloha. I'm Dr. Sasha Lesson, and I'd like to tell you about the two Adams and the two Eves that are the foundation of uh, the people on Earth today, uh, most of them anyhow. And I call the story Creation Times Two. And it, the people that created us were big people from the planet Nibiru who came to Earth 450,000 years ago. They came for gold. They wanted the gold to ship back to their planet, Nibiru, which uh, came through the our inner solar system every 3,600 years, passing between Jupiter and Mars. So it came regularly. It was going around another uh, star besides Solaris called Nemesis. And uh, they knew there was gold here. Their instruments told them there was gold here. They had uh, uh, finally uh, created stations here and started mining the gold, which they shipped. They found it in Southeast Africa and shipped up the, uh, uh, the coast uh, into the Persian Gulf and uh, transferred it uh, to rockets, flew it to their uh, transfer station in Mars, and from there took it to Nibiru, where it was turned into white powder of monoatomic gold, which they floated into the atmosphere to plug uh, the ionosphere hole that they had made by their thermonuclear war. These were very warlike uh, 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 people. And uh, so, th so they uh, basically uh, came here to Earth, and uh, this is their story. We know about their story because their head scientist uh, had tablets made in Akkadian and other uh, at, in 2024 BCE uh, that my teacher Zachariah Sitchin got hold of and translated as the lost book of Enki. Enki is the uh, ancient name of Lucifer and uh, that's how we know about it. Uh, Zechariah had the biggest collection of these uh, tablets and uh, he was the world's foremost translator of these languages. And what uh, became apparent from uh, reading them is that Enki, Lucifer, realized that uh, if he could get genes from Homo erectus, which was the uh, humanoid that the Council of Hatona had placed uh, in, the, in the African area uh, many, many, many years ago, uh, and Enki was fascinated, utterly fascinated, by Homo erectus. Homo erectus was letting animals out of his traps. He had a place down in, in Zimbabwe. Uh, Enki was in charge. Enki's name was Lucifer in, in the Bible or in, in later stuff, but it's the same guy. And uh, he uh, was utterly fascinated. He saw that this other human being, Bigfoot's ancestor, uh, was a compassionate creature, showing all kinds of affection, letting other animals out of, animals out of traps, uh, communicating telepathically, and he got the notion, if I could take some of these genes and put it in our genome, uh, we could do a lot better instead of being so obsessed with status and who's on top and uh, being so murderous, uh, we could be somewhat like these creatures. That would be really cool, he thought. And so he started working on it. But he was supposed to be <laughs> mainly in charge of getting the gold. And the people that were digging the gold were volunteers from Nibiru. After the uh, gold had been found and everything, uh, the Nibirans started volunteering. We'll, we'll dig gold and, for you to send back to the planet and save everybody and save our planet but it was decades and decades under the earth and they went deeper and deeper and they were get, and they started complaining we're not getting enough beer well you want more beer and not only that there's no women down here and they were getting very restive and uh, so basically uh, lucifer told them look i'm going to get you guys out of here i've got a plan i'm not going to tell you what it is but all you got to do is slow down the shipments of gold uh, and uh, the boss, Yahweh, and Lelis, he was called in those days, is going to come down here with his son, Ninurta, the guy with all the weapons. Uh, 
All you got to do is make a demonstration and look like you're on the verge of violence and I'll step in and save everything. Just do what I say. The boss will come down and I'll get you guys to go home. So that was what he promised them. They uh, said, okay, we are, we, we are going to do that. So there's a big showdown. Uh, they slowed, uh, the miners slow down the shipment. The boss, Yahweh, comes down with his son, Ninurta, uh, and uh, he, he uh, sees the, uh, uh, these mutinous guys, and they surround his house where he's staying, and uh, they start burning their uh, mining tools. Uh, Ninurta... Uh, the boss's son has got his weapons at ready. Let him come, Dad. I'll mow him down. Uh, uh, and uh, Enki said, no, wait, we don't have to have this. I got a solution. Uh, there's this uh, hominoid here, and uh, I can uh, make uh, uh, helpers uh, using his genome and our genome, and they'll do the work, and we can send these guys home. They just want to go home. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, boss, she always says, oh, nonsense. And Ninurta, the son, says, hey, you don't need people. You know that's illegal anyway. Uh, make machines. You're such a great machine maker. Um, uh, and uh, Lucifer says, hey, no, no. They're not going to be slaves. They'll be helpers. They'll be glad to help us. Yahweh says, look, this is bigger than us. Let's let's consult Nibiru and see what dad, King Anu, uh, says on Nibiru. So they consult Anu. Anu makes a compromise. Well, we won't make a species that is illegal. The Galactic Council will be down on my case if, 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 we, uh, if you guys make a species. Uh, Lucifer, just make a clone, make clone masters, but make sure they're not... Uh, Breedable. Well, at that point, uh, Yahweh doesn't say a word. When Dad has spoken, um, Yahweh goes right along with it. So that's the deal. They can make clones. They can send the volunteers home. And so Lucifer, Lilith, and Toth start working on um, making a uh, helper species, as they would uh, think of it. And... Uh, they tried all kinds of things. Uh, and uh, for, first of all, uh, Enki, Lucifer, and Toth, he was known as Ningashida, uh, had intercourse with uh, the um, Bigfoot women. That didn't take, there was no babies. They had fun trying, I gotta say. Then they started using uh, dishes and flasks and they had several successful uh, zygotes that they created with Anunnaki sperm and uh, Homo erectus uh, eggs. And they finally were getting really close to their uh, viable uh, child. And uh, they decide they're going to, what's, what's missing, Nimma comes up with, you know, what's missing is they're not getting the mitochondrial DNA that they need from being in a womb. And uh, so we need to put this in a womb. Uh, oh, and so Anki says, well, use my wife. She'll be, she, she's, she, you, uh, you can use her womb. Uh, and uh, Lilith says, no way. Uh, this is going to be dangerous. We don't know how long a term would be for, for uh, these creatures. Uh, this is, I, I, it's got to be in me. I'll take it first. So she's pregnant uh, with the first viable uh, fetus, it turns out, and then she births it. She stays, she's conscious. She has some help from her uh, fellow uh, medical practitioners, and she births the first uh, child of our species. It's going to be the clone master, and it's there he comes. There's Adam. This is one of the famous rubbings from Zechariah Sitchin that he got. Uh, there's Nimma. Uh, uh, she's got her modern name of Lilith uh, uh, printed up there. She's got Adam, Adamu, as they called him, on her lap. She said, my hands have made it. 
Um, there's, there's Enki uh, and Toth, and this is it. They've made the clone master, the, the first human in our, our race. And what we, knew, we remember, this is really important because from the very get-go, first let's start with the first boy of our species who had reddish brown skin like the clay of Africa. He had kinky black hair, dark eyes. He was perfect as far as they were concerned. He was just like little Nibirin boys, except for one thing. He had a foreskin. Nibirins didn't have a foreskin. Later on in the series, you'll see that uh, Yahweh uh, made his followers uh, circumcise themselves so that they would look like uh, Anunnaki boys and he could tell them from the other um, homo sapiens of our race that were earthlings that were running around. And this picture, uh, picture of Adam there, this depiction of Adam, um, uh, the snake is a representation of Lucifer. I mean, that's, that's what it's come to in our icon or iconic uh, collections. So then they're going to make a female uh, and, and, and see what happens. And so again, Anki says, hey, well, at least put the female in my wife. And so, so she says, sure, I'll, 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 I'll take it. And so now they're making a clone masters so that the, the uh, males that they're making to work the mines will have uh, uh, some fun with some women. And so the, the, the first female, uh, zygote is in Domkina, in the wife of Lucifer. And uh, Domkina has different mitochondrial DNA. And so naturally, her, uh, the baby, when it comes out, will be way different. And the first female in our species was indeed different. Her name was Tiamat. She had, uh, of course, she comes from uh, a, a zygote that uh, had already been uh, through Lilith, and now she, it, we're adding to this Domkina's MDMA, and we have the first girl. Her name is Tiamat. She's blonde, strawberry blonde. She uh, is white-skinned. She has blue eyes. Tiamat. Well, Yahweh said, I, you know, uh, I want to take a look at these clone masters that you've uh, uh, created. Uh, I want you to bring them uh, up to your place in the Persian Gulf, he says to Lucifer, uh, next to my place. I got a place up there, too. Uh, and uh, so Damkina and Lilith and the, and the two uh, now teenage kids, Adamu and Tiamat, uh, come up to um, Enki's place in Basra, and uh, Nima has there a garden with every kind of psychedelic and medicinal uh, plant you can think of. She brought them from Nibiru. She's been experimenting all over with, with uh, all the specimens she could find on Earth, and and so uh, Tiamat knows they're <laughs> really special, and she takes something, probably uh, something with a lot of dimethyltryptamine in it. And, uh, and she and uh, Adamu, they've been making love all along. They make love on, on uh, this material too. And uh, she has a enlightenment experience. She realizes she feels a coherent field with Adam, with the creatures in, uh, in Lucifer's garden, with Lucifer and, um, Damkina and Lilith, and uh, she just feels universal oneness. You know, if you've ever uh, had that feeling, that's what she got. And she was an, an enlightened child and really bright anyway. And she has these three super bright adults, the smartest uh, of the Anunnaki, who have been educating her anyway. So the boss, Yahweh, comes over uh, and he sees. Uh, Oh, here, here we go. There's, there's an idea of uh, the snake. If you see on the left, that's Enki. 
in our in traditional iconic uh, iconic uh, fashion uh, in our Bible. Uh, he's shown as a snake and uh, uh, tempting Eve, but it wasn't like that at all, according to Enki. And, uh, you know, she gets pregnant and uh, she's very pregnant and she's really a bright person. And uh, when the Yahweh comes over to see her, he sees she's pregnant and she just comes right up and starts chatting with him and saying, look, I made a little table and I'm trying to figure out. And she was doing some kind of geometrical problem and look at the clothes. And she just started chatting and Yahweh was really angry. You're supposed to be a clone. And he, he addresses to uh, uh, Lucifer. You made them preg. They made them breedable. You broke the rules. You know, throw them in uh, restraints. And so his son comes over and throws Enki in uh, uh, receipts. Enki Lucifer. There he is uh, on the left. He's, he's got something. He's got something like handcuffs on him. The those uh, electric symbols all around him are uh, a restraint. Uh, there's little Tiamat looking at dad. Dad, what the hell are they doing to you? And uh, on the other side of little Tiamat, um, there's uh, Enlil, Yahweh, and uh, he's uh, saying, throw him in chains. I'm going to try him for treason. And he exceeded his mandate. And there's behind Yahweh is Ninurta, He's the guy with the weapons, and uh, so that's that's the uh, the situation. But of course, the Anunnaki are not going to lose their chief science and scientist. And when uh, Enlil Yahweh's rage subsides, they just go on with things. As a matter of fact, uh, his uh, Ninurta says, "You know, Enki's got these slaves to do the work. I want slaves too." You now Yahweh sends uh, Tiamat and Adamu to Zimbabwe to breed slaves and they're having lots, they have many, many children and their children have children. And that's, that's exactly what they're doing. In the meantime, Ninurta is complaining, how come Enki's got, uh, and, and all his friends have got uh, these slaves working their places and, and I, I need slaves too. And so he, he does a, uh, he's agitating. In the meantime, Lucifer realizes that uh, Yahweh is not going to let uh, the earthlings, that's us, um, have their potential uh, realized. He's going to keep them dumb as he can. So he starts something he calls the snake brotherhood uh, because Enki uh, was called a snake by uh, Enlil. And uh, he says, okay, we'll, we'll be snakes. And he tells, he starts telling his uh, selected hybrids the truth. We're not gods. We're not special. We just have more information than you have. We have technology that's been developed through through the uh, eons. And um, we have critical thinking. You're capable of it too. And, uh, you know, uh, Yahweh is going to make sure that you don't know all this. Um, however, keep it a secret and we're going to keep educating our kids so that at least the truth stays with the race. And when, if we Anunnaki get the gold that we need to get and leave, uh, there'll be a race of people here that know the real truth that we're not gods. We're just people with superior technology. The world is going to need to be able to think when we're not here anymore. And so that, that was the intention of, uh, of the snake society, the original intention before it was infiltrated. But that's another story. Ninurta, in the meantime, has been agitating and agitating. Finally, his dad says, okay, go get some slaves already. So he, he, they make an artillery uh, device. They blow a hole in uh, the, in, uh, the place where Enki ha has his happy little uh, village of uh, earthlings and uh, they get slaves and they bring them up to um, Iraq and so we, we have slaves from the get-go. Ninurta comes down with his missile 
He's got weapons. His vehicle is shown in the symbolic form here. There's Ninurta with his weapon. He blows a hole in the uh, compound, takes slaves. And now this, all the Anunnaki um, big shots have slaves and they breed them to take care of them and uh, feed them and do the, do the work that they don't want to do. And um, they expend their uh, grid of these uh, magnetic uh, granite boulders and they have a sonar technology where they can move uh, water and gold and ore and all kinds of things down these lanes and uh, transport them ultimately uh, to uh, v vessels that sail up the uh, coast of Southeast Africa, up the Persian Gulf, and there it's ta they're taken off, they're refined into ingots and uh, flown off to the uh, transshipment base on Mars. All the hybrids uh, uh, have to do is just dig this yellow stuff up and uh, they get fed and uh, they, everything seems to be going okay for a hundred thousand years. They were created 300,000 years ago and for a hundred thousand years this cooperative uh, deal between the earthlings, the descendants of uh, Adamu and Tiamat uh, are doing the work of the Anunnaki and the Anunnaki are sending gold back and the hole in their atmosphere is getting uh, filled with the uh, white powder of monatomic gold and uh, the, it, it, uh, the earthlings are, con are encouraged by the Anunnaki to just keep breeding and just keep breeding. And after a while, it gets to a situation where there's about 900 of the Anunnaki, their astronaut corps, uh, the uh, transshipment uh, uh, astronauts on Mars, uh, the shuttle pilots, and so forth. There's, there's about 900 Anunnaki, but there's hundreds of thousands of us Earthlings. After 100,000 years, around 200,000 BCE, Numero came through the inner solar system at a time when our Earth was in a position to be close enough to be drastically affected by uh, Nibiru and its moons. And so things got rough on Earth. And the, uh, the slaves that were working in the mines said, hey, you know, we're getting hungry. We've been growing our own food. We know how to do it. Uh, heck with this yellow stuff, are they doing us any good? And they started going off in the bush and there'd already been some that had mutinied earlier, some that went and uh, uh, they were old and they were let to go out in the bush. So uh, the Africans from the uh, gold mines basically created all kinds of tribes uh, during this hard times. And uh, Yahweh was really upset. Get, make them work more. We're not getting enough gold. We need to send more gold. The uh, passing through also messed up the, made the hole get bigger in, in Nibiru again. He starts putting pressure on uh, Enki. Enki, you've got to make better slaves. These slaves are just going off. They're not doing what uh, they were supposed to do. So Lucifer said, yeah, I know how to make better slaves. So he, goes, he gets the two prettiest uh, young uh, earthlings that he could find and uh, he makes a baby with each one of them. And this is the second Adam and Eve that he's creating. He's create uh, the second, uh, and the second Adam, the, 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 the second uh, genitor that he's made uh, with one of the girls is named Adapa. And the, uh, the uh, genitrix that he makes with a different girl, uh, ha she has a, uh, a child too, and it's a female, and that, that child is Titi. So that's the second Adam and Eve, Adapa and Titi. And uh, this uh, family, and you know, uh, Lucifer had a uh, polyamorous family. He had his wife, Damkina, and he had his sister girlfriend, uh, Lilith, and these two, these three adults, put all their attention on these, ch these two children, Adapa and Titi. They taught the girl uh, all the feminine uh, arts, uh, uh, how to make beautiful things. Um, and Enki, Lucifer, gave his special attention to Adapa, who was a genius anyway. He turned out to be the, the smartest thing around. There's uh, a, a 
Damkina and she's uh, uh, helping Titi really master the arts. Lucifer is teaching Adapa how to run all the farms, how to run the herds, how to run the estates, to how to run his own descendants, which are multiplying very fast, and how to run the descendants of uh, Adam, the uh, Adamites. So, uh, and this kid is so smart. He has his own uh, uh, airplane. He's able to uh, have, he has a harp type uh, device where he can make the wind blow his sailboat the way he wants it to blow. And uh, the king of Nibiru hears about him and wants to see him. And so Anki is sending uh, his, his kid, uh, his, his three sons, and one of them uh, is uh, our ancestor, uh, Dapa, uh, to Nibiru to meet the king. And this is a, a very, very smart kid, and now he's getting to go as an adult. Uh, he's running everything, and uh, Anki is letting him go uh, to see the king on Nibiru. And there's a little tablet that uh, uh, Anki gives to his son, Thoth, who's going with his other son, Dumuzi, and Adapa to visit uh, King Anu. Uh, I would say also it's interesting uh, for another story that we're going to get into is that TT uh, was so fetching that uh, uh, Lucifer uh, had a child with her too. And he did this. He had, he had children with his daughters and his granddaughters and so forth. But he uh, made uh, Lucifer uh, and Titi begat Cain. Adapa uh, begat Cain's fraternal twin, twin Abel, uh, with Titi. So these uh, Adapa and Dumuzi and Toth go to see the king and uh, they go there in a rocket. Adapa is really frightened and his, uh, his uh, Anunnaki, full Anunnaki brothers uh, comfort him. When he meets the king, uh, Thoth gives the king a tablet from Enki and the tablet says, please don't keep my son on Nibiru. I know you can give him Im uh, immortal life, which he's, he wants, he knows we've got it. Uh, but he's going to live a long time anyway. And I need him. Please don't keep my son on the bureau. Please send him back to me. I need Adapa. And so the king uh, uh, reads the thing and he says to, to uh, Toth, do you know what this says? I'll tell you what it says. It says uh, that Enki's son is Adapa, that he's Adapa is your a uh, half brother, and Toth says, "Yeah, I know that. I took I took everybody's blood sample. I I already knew that. But thank you so much, sire, for telling me that." And and that's the uh, a very important friendship is forged between uh, Thoth and King Anu, which we'll talk about in later slideshows. So Demuzi comes back to Earth with all kinds of animals that weren't on earth before, different kinds of goats, different kinds of sheep, and all kinds of uh, grains. Uh, the Anunnaki are very fond of beer, so he's got all kinds of uh, things to make alcohols with, more wine, uh, uh, vine, more grape vines. Uh, Nima had brought some, but now Debuzi has more, and he's learned all about animal husbandry. He's coming back to run um, the monopoly that Lucifer is, uh, wants to develop uh, on animals. And uh, Lucifer's son, Satan, or Marduk, as he was called in those days, tutors uh, Abel. He's going to run the herding monopoly. And Ninurta, Yahweh's son, co-ops Cain, who's really Enki's son, and he's going to use, uh, uh, Cain is going to run the farming monopoly for Enlil, for, for um, Yahweh. However, um, Abel took his sheep to water in a way that trampled uh, Cain's garden, and Cain killed Abel with a stone. The Anunnaki 
uh, are, are there's a lot of pressure for them to educate, uh, execute the guy, this this person. He he killed his brother, uh, and he has to fess up. Now wait a minute, you can't execute him because he's my direct son. I got to tell you, I yeah, I did it. Of course, like you know me already. Uh, and so the council says, okay, well, we'll compromise. Uh, Toth, can you mark this guy genetically? Uh, make it so he doesn't have any hair on his face. Then we'll know that this is this is the race we can't trust. They got bad blood, but we're sparing him because they got good blood. They got uh, Enki's blood, and he's the smartest guy around. Uh, and so they so Toth makes these uh, adjustments, and uh, they banish Cain, Cain, and his uh, tribe, and they start multiplying to east of Eden, basically, they, 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 they moved to the Indian subcontinent. Uh, and later on, uh, when Toth uh, starts helping uh, Ninurta make an alternate spaceport uh, on top of the Andes uh, near Lake Titicaca, it's called uh, Tiwanaku, uh, they take the descendants of Cain from east of Eden, from the Indian subcontinent, uh, and they become the Indians <laughs> of uh, South America. They were there a long time before anyone could have ever crossed the Bering Straits and migrated down there. Uh, they were there at the time of Noah's flood and uh, survived uh, the flood on islands in the middle of Lake Titicaca. And so the South American Indians, um, Indians, uh, were really uh, slaves, um, the descendants of Cain. And um, here's a depiction, and you can see that uh, the uh, South American Indians are, according to the Anunnaki, the descendants of Cain, or Cain, who is a descendant directly of uh, Anunnaki. Uh, that one of the greatest uh, uh, Anunnaki, Enki, or Lucifer himself. And uh, so that's their story. And uh, do uh, get our books and learn this in detail. Thank you so much for listening and stay tuned. We got lots more for you.